It's Wes, welcome to this video. Today we're gonna to be talking about the Canon EOS R. Yes, the channel, the channel, the camera that I started my channel with. Well, I started before that, but I really jump started when I started talking about the Canon EOS R. And so many of you started watching videos and thank you for that. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. I talk about Fuji and Canon and I try to be useful in every video. So today I'm gonna to tell you is it a good idea to invest in the Canon EOS R in 2021? You're a beautiful person and a good person. And if no one has told you that today, let me be the first person to tell you that. Now this camera came out in 2018. I purchased it in the January after it came out, uh, right after I went to the Consumer Electronics Show in, in Las Vegas. And I invested in this camera as my move into the mirrorless world, the full frame mirrorless world. Now I had shot a Sony full frame mirrorless. I had used the GH5 uh, mirrorless system. I have tried the Nikon. Uh, I have tried uh, Fuji. Uh, actually that Fuji is what I'm filming on right now. That's my personal camera. But for a professional camera, would I recommend this? Or another way to think about this is, what's the best entry level full frame mirrorless system to get into in 2021? This has been my weapon of choice. Uh, that's, that's kind of a violent word. This has been my tool of choice as I uh, go about making my, my videos for YouTube, but more importantly, doing my client work. So today I'm gonna tell you without holding back anything, honestly, is this the best tool for a full frame mirrorless camera in 2021? Now, I'm going to say it has uh, the ability to handle all types of photography, almost all. I'll say almost all types of photography from uh, food photography, which I've done, weddings, which I've done, car photography, which I've done. Um, it does uh, event photography, which is something I love to do with it. I would say out of all those things that it does, I only wouldn't recommend it probably for sports photography. And so that's my one, one reservation about this camera. Um, and the same with the, the EOS RP. And we're gonna start talking about the competition at the, towards uh, later in the video. I'm gonna go from Nikon to Sony, all the things that you might consider as a competitor to this. Um, but it handles all types of photography. Now, in terms of video, I would say that it has, um, been plagued by the criticism of when you film in 4k there's a crop and so one of the things that you're going to find is that if you're looking for a full frame system uncropped 4k now the downsides of the video in this is we talked about the the 4k crop but it's also not stabilized and so if you're looking for a stabilized video shooter or video um I would say this is not the camera you're looking for in 2021. One of the strengths I think this camera has is that it's part of the RF lens family. So let's look at this. Oh, by the way, that's a neat factor. Whenever it's off, it closes, uh, it closes a little shutter over the sensor to keep that sensor nice and safe. The 25, excuse me, the 24 to 105 RF F4 um, lens, $999 is truly underrated, underappreciated. It's probably the best kit lens out there. It's an L series lens, very sharp, and this can get you through um, a lot of gigs. So um, I would say that you have uh, this system, $999 there. This body is now $1799. When I bought it, it was $2299. So you're looking at um, $27.99 for this. Now, is that entry level? That's a good question. And we're gonna talk about some of the competition coming up. But before we do that, let's talk about some other uh, RF glass, the 35 millimeter, which is my favorite, and the 50 millimeter, which I just picked up, is, um, is a tiny little piece of RF glass, and it is four, uh, no, it's not $4.99, it's $1.99. It's $199 for this, $499 for this, $499 for this awesome half macro lens. The quality on these is both really, really good. And so I think that one of the things that you're, you're gonna be looking at is 
glass. You're not just investing in a camera lens, you're investing in a system. And so I would say one of the things that recommends the, the EOS R in 2021 is your access to the RF glass. Now, before we go further, let's not forget that uh, Canon has been making great glass for years. And so if you have EF glass, you can get this EF to RF adapter and you can use your EF glass on the, the R system. Now that's the R, the RP, it's the R5, it's the R6. They are three, that adapter works for, for all of those. So those are the reasons that I can recommend this. Now the price point is pretty good. I'm, I'm just considering if it's 2000 or less, I'm gonna call it entry level for the body. Um, I think real entry level is right around a thousand. And so the, the landscape looks really different right there. So before we go into that landscape, I'm gonna talk about the main <laughs> competitor and that's the Panasonic Lumix S5. Now the Panasonic Lumix S5 is incredible. And the reason it's incredible is it gives you 4K 60, okay? Now granted, the Panasonic does have a crop, but so does the EOS R. It also has IBIS, so in-body image stabilization. This is unstabilized like we talked about before. Now the Panasonic S5, one of the things that's it's noted, it's noted to feel a little off balance, kind of heavy on the left-hand side. And I think it doesn't have the benefit of the great system of RF uh, glass. I, I, I think that that's something that you would uh, consider that Canon is still ahead in. Uh, but it does record in uh, there's log and it also has 10 bit 422 uh, recording externally. So it has um, a good uh, video as well. Although the bit rate is not as high as the Canon. So I would say that if you're looking for uh, primarily to be a video shooter in 2021, I think you should really consider the S5 as a competitor for the price point. It's $19.99 compared to the $17.99 of the Canon EOS R. And so with IBIS, with 4K60, even with the crop, because that, that occurs here too, you really have to look at the Panasonic Lumix S5. Now, what else is out there? I think if you're talking just photography, you might look at the Z5, the Z6 II. Uh, those are about, let's see what the prices are. The, the Z5 is $1,300, right around there. And the Z6 II is right around $2,000. So I think that is also good if you're considering um, moving into uh, full frame mirrorless in 2021. Don't neglect to think about those. So you have the, the, the Z series from, from Nikon. So you have the Z6 II, you have the Z5, uh, you have uh, the Panasonic S5 and the EOS R. And I would say the Panasonic S5 for video, it has IBIS, it has 4K 60, albeit with a crop. I think it's worth looking at. I think that is one of the leading full frame mirrorless cameras out there for video. Now, in terms of image quality, I, I prefer the Canon full frame. I think it's, uh, you've heard about Canon colors. I think I would rely on that. The autofocus, I would rely on that. Um, you have the RF system to, um, to lead you into the future. And I think that's one of the things that you have to think about is you're not just buying a camera, uh, but you're buying into a system. And so I think the RF glass is one of the reasons to invest in Canon over uh, Nikon or over the, the Panasonic, honestly. Those are my thoughts right now about 2021. What does it hold for the full frame mirrorless camera? Um, and I really think that you have to uh, give respect to the Canon R. So the Canon R is three years old and uh, its birthday is later this month. Its third birthday is uh, later this month. And so it's holding its own in a very, very competitive landscape for uh, full frame mirrorless cameras. Now, there are a couple other things that you might think about, and I will just say uh, right off the bat, I've kind of priced these out. So that's the Nikon uh, Z7 II, it's the uh, Sigma FP, which is $24.99. So that's like 500 bucks or more above that $2,000 mark. And the uh, Sony A7R Mark, 
Mark IV, which is around $3,000. And then you have, of course, the R6 from Canon, the R5 from Canon, and all of those are a little bit more than I would say uh, an entry-level full-frame mirrorless camera should cost in 2021. So I would, if it were me, I would invest in the R, um, but I actually might invest in the RP and get some more Canon glass and save that money. Because the RP, the big disadvantage is that you're looking at um, battery life being not as good. It's a little more entry level, but remember they both have just one uh, SD card slot. So they're very similar, similar in that regard. So in terms of um, entry level, full frame mirrorless, you might look at the Canon RP as well. But I think the bigger battery has, uh, has much to recommend it in terms of shooting in a professional setting. All right, subscribe if you're not subscribed. Give me a like, leave me a comment, and let me know what's your choice of full frame mirrorless cameras in 2021. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.